This is Code.org, and this is my Creative Coding with the Theater project. And let's see what it does. And by that, I mean I'm showing you. So my topic is dogs. And you can choose any topic you want. My favorite pups. Adopt a dog. See, I included two messages. Labrador. A border collie. Woo, look at the rotation. Golden retriever. Spin, spin. Bum, ba, da, dum. Ta-da. All right. So this is a difficult, complicated project that you have to do in a short amount of time. You are welcome. It's entirely possible. So something I don't normally do is already have my program complete. And that in part is due to the complexity of this. In this tutorial, I want to focus on broad strokes, how to put together a program that meets the requirements and is successful. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the rubric and in particular, the rubric of the rubric. I meant the planning document, but the rubric of the planning document, it would have made sense if I said it that. Anyways, all right, what do we have to have? We need to design a class or implement inheritance with one parent class and one subclass. I definitely think and is what should have been meant here. So we want to design a class and implement inheritance with one, with one parent class and one subclass. Great. Define defines and calls one overridden, overloaded, static and or private method in addition to public. That's key. Use two different data structures to store elements. Manipulate elements in each data structure using loops, nested loops, and conditionals. All right. With that in mind, I first want to do a broad bird's eye view of my application. Things you want to be aware of, guys, is we need multiple data structures. So in my example, I have a string array here. That's a data structure. I also use an array list. That is a distinct data structure. What is not a distinct data structure is this. Nope, I already have an array. Another array, even if this is an integer array, it is the same type of data structure as my string array. That is not a unique data structure. So be careful of that trap. What could be unique is a 2D array, right? X equals blah, 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 whatever. That would be a different data structure as well. So here are the two data structures I'm using, an array and an array list. I also use an array list down here. So I include a array of colors. I create an array list of different rotations that can be used to produce my scene. I then have an array list of dog slides, and I'll get into that class momentarily. It's up over here. And what I do with all of that is I, well, I create different, inst I instantiate objects from that class, and I pass the, uh, the array list to the creative scene dot plus constructor, along with a, another parameter. All right, so let's head over to this class, creative scene dot plus or creative scene plus creative scene plus extends ooh, what did i just doop, undo that extends creative scene all right so creative scene plus is built on top of the parent class creative scene here's creative scene this class i also created this class extends scene which is fine this is still my super class of creative scene plus all right so like i said in the constructor i pass that 200 right here and my dog slides. That's going to get assigned right up here. What am I doing with that? Well, first off, the size, right, image size, is going to be set in the parent class. It's why I'm calling it super. Second is the slide list. How this is going to be used throughout my application, how this is used throughout my application, well, it's actually a common approach that you'll see in programming. I want to dive into this slide because we're going to see a lot of how I use it down here in create scene. So my slide class contains the file name, the title, the color list, and the rotation list of each individual slide. So how that might apply to you if your presentation, your project is on, I don't know, your favorite uh, shoes, right? Shoes are cool still, I think. Uh, I can feel my students cringing and shaking their heads. Uh, if yours is on shoes, maybe you have a shoe class. And what you could do is, well, maybe if you have a picture, right? So a file name for your shoe, type of shoe, brand of shoe, 
year of shoe, uh, an array list of shoe uh, options. I I don't know, but you get the idea here. You can contain all of the information related to an individual item within your project by using a class and instantiating it. That's what I've done with slide. So I have this and I give it a file name. The animal name is, or the dog breed is what I goes for title, color list, and rotation list. I then have getters and setters. This is an approach we've seen once or twice before and is very common in programming. So I allow the, uh, the retrieval of a file name because notice all of my instant variables are private, right? All of these class variables are private. So then I allow access to a file name by returning it through this method, which is public. I also have get title. I don't have set file name. So just that. I have set title so that you can get or change the title. And that's the only way you can reach it. Because again, this is object oriented programming. We're encapsulating our logic. We're locking it down. And so we don't want direct access to the title field. We're going to let the, our users have it or the programs calling this class is calling it getters and setters. I also have get color list, set color list, get random color, get random rotation, so on and so forth. This is a great strategy for containing information, uh, for containing related information and utilizing it in a tidy way. All right, so I wanna go back to this. Actually, I'm lying to you. I wanna head back over here. Creative scene plus my scene. As I said, we go ahead and instantiate an object here. And then what is going to happen with our object? Well, first, I want to point out that I actually call a method directly my scene dot make scene title. And this make scene title, I should actually point out one other thing I call directly, which is make random rotation. I'm going to hit both of these right now. So make scene title and make random rotation are in the creative scene class. Now, you'll notice that make scene title I call upon once my my scene object is instantiated. So how this is getting called is it's actually going to the scene object is scene cre uh, creative scene plus, right? It's an instance of this. It heads over to this class. That method is not contained within, realizes that it's an extension of this class, goes up here, and then it finds make scene title, which is here. That is distinct, though, from creative, uh, creative scene dot make random rotation. For this, notice this isn't an object. I am calling this method directly, and that method can be called directly because it is static. A static method you can call directly. Make sure, though, your static method can only reference other items that are static. If you're curious what those will be, you want to look at the Java utils uh, documentation. Code.org stuff by and large isn't static. Static means that it will not change based on instantiation. It is general to that class regardless of uh, object creation. So basically, you want to stick to math-ish type functions if you do, you know, divided by 2 times 10. Easy things such as that. That would allow you to do a static method, but also you can use things from different Java utils classes. All right, and I'm bringing up a static. Ooh, I lost it. Bloop. Because that is one of our options, static or private. All right, so now let's get into our create scene, the bread and butter of this project. Create scene is going to run here. What I do is loop through current slide of my slide list, my slide list is an array list of my slide object, bear in mind. I use these variables because I think it makes my code more readable. So what I set up here is string dot transition color is current slide get random cover, color. Well, get random color, get title, get max rotation index, get rotation. Let's head over and take a closer look at my slide class and how all these things are going to be working, how all the methods are getting executed. So again, get scene title or get title is just going to contain the name of the dog. And I set that way over here when I instantiate these objects before adding them to my dog slides array list and passing it to the constructor. So that's that. Get file name. Well, that's going to be the actual name of the image. And if I head over to manage assets, right, that's where my images are located. I didn't magic these names up. These names match these assets exactly. And colors, what is colors coming from? Right here, 
colors is this array of colors rotation list that is coming from here right so when i am looping through and grabbing these items that's their originate they're originating from the objects instantiated there all right like i said get title get random color let's take a look at that get random rotation all right so get random color and what i am doing here is i'm generating a random number and we have seen this before it's math.util class or java.util uh, math cl class java language math and then i am casting it to be an integer i'm using math.random remember that's going to generate a random number between zero and one and then i'm multiplying it by the length of the color list to get a random index within my color list i then output color list random index so whatever number this is it will be a number zero to the length of my list and then i output that then i output the length then i output that color okay so let's look at get random get max rotation here guys i am looping through each point in my rotation list and keep in mind this is an array list as opposed to color list which is merely an array i loop through first the rotation list i use dot size to make sure i don't pass to the end of it since it's an array list size is what we use to access the length of the list i then have a conditional statement now these are all important because you do need to loop through data structures the different structures that you have you do need to uh, use a conditional statement you do need to make modifications uh, well actually this is just searching right now and if the max whatever number I, my max is i have it start at the at the very first index within this list so whatever numbers at the first index i say i assume that's the max then i loop through and if whatever our current number is right rotation list dot get current index is greater than what my current save maximum is i assign the new maximum to that and then i save the index value that i'm at here that is because i'm going to actually return the index value now the reason i'm opting to do that is because i wanted to modify in part to meet the requirements of this assignment i wanted to modify the rotation index so notice i have the rotation index returned i instantly then do current slide get max rotation index or get max rotation or get rotation get rotation i pass the index and i'm just getting the maximum rotation that that I know now is located at the index. The reason I'm doing these items separately is because I am going to here remove that rotation. And in order to remove it from the array list, I need to know the index that the maximum rotation is at. Current slide dot remove rotation, head over here, and my method that will do that is here. Okay, finally, I want to do the changing of the color transition color to blue so when you need to think of nested loops and that is one of our requirements here when you think about that keep in mind that our current slide dot remove rotation how we originally got the rotation index is technically going to be a nested loop loops here is a loop right and it's contained within a loop now for the current slide remove nope current slide change color what i do here is i take the transition color and i decided i want to set them all to blue well if i go over here once again i get to oh is that oh i'm lying to you i made it right here so this time i decided to perform a nested loop in this manner and you can see how it's nested so i loop through all of my slides here i created an array a temporary one well I have this reference, the current colors in the list, and then I loop through each of those colors. If that color is equal to the old color, right? What's the old color? The color that was just used for the transition. If it is equal to that, I then set the new color to be blue. Current slide set color right over here. And it allows me to set based on index, the new color. Okay guys, this is a lot and I know this is a lot. I want to hit one more thing, which is the inside of draw image. Let's head up here. So now I have gotten through, gone through how we get each of these pieces of data, where they are generated and coming from. 
Then we're going to pass them to our draw image method. That method here, file name, title, color, rotation. I set our current rotation to zero. I then say as long as wall current rotation is less than or equal to 360, I will continue to operate this loop and the logic contained within will continue to repeat. So draw image file name. What is the file name? It is being referenced. What is draw image? The current slide get file name. So that will be the image that is drawn. Our current rotation will originally notice I set it equal to zero. Keep in mind, it does not stay equal to zero and we'll get there momentarily. I then write text. I want to hit upon, which is an important portion of this assignment, overloading and overwriting methods. So this method is overloading an existing method. Notice I have draw image here. Okay. And it has string, 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 int. Notice I have draw image here and it has a string and an int only. So overloading is what is occurring here because this method has a different signature. It has different parameters specifically it has different parameters and these different parameter parameters distinguish it from this draw image method. They also, by the way, distinguish it because this is inheriting the scene class from the code.org scene draw image method, which is here somewhere. So the reason the computer knows what to run when I call or my program when it compiles knows what to execute when I call this is because of the data type and the and the number of parameters alone. And it executes this method, not the method and contained within the parent class. That being said, I then just to be fun, call the draw image method from the parent class. This draw image cannot be this one. Notice the parameters here, file name, current rotation. Instead, I am using the parents class draw image method, which is the file name and rotation to output our image to the screen. Also the override. Let's talk overriding. This is the method that is doing the override. Notice I draw image that I run write text. An override is when this class method is going to be used, even though the, a method with the identical signature exists in the parent class. Let me head up here. Method with an identical signature, write text, string text. Yep, completely the same. However, this will be used because it is contained within this class. If I reference write text over here as well on this object, right? If I do my scene dot write text, the item that will always be called is this version of write text because the subclass has a method that will override the parent class. This class will never see or that command will never get to the parent class. It will execute this method, which is why well, this is called overwriting and this is merely called overloading. So I overwrite it text. I set the font. I set the style. I set the height. I decided to do the color white and I go ahead and draw the text. Draw text though is not contained within this class or this class. It is from the scene class itself. Whew. Okay. Then we hit the bottom. Finally, rotation is updated. Rotation is going to be equal, current rotation is equal to whatever it used to be equal to plus the uh, item, the number I pass for rotation hits the bottom back to the top. Boom, boom, boom. All right, guys, I went through a ton too fast, but that's part of this assignment. It is a large challenging project. So what I want you to keep in mind is you really do need to hit overloading. You need to hit overriding. Here are some examples of those. You want to make sure to use two data types, such as a array and an array list, not like an int array and a string array. Those are the same data or two structure types, such as an array and array list or a 2D array, right? String, blah, 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 not just int array and string array. You want to use two different structures. You want to make sure to manipulate those contents with loops, such as I have done here and over here as well. Right? I'm going to watch my fancy dog scene generator maker again and move forward. My favorite pups, <gasps> Labrador, Border Collie. Golden, look how handsome the golden is. Ooh. All right, guys, have fun and yeah, onward.